as we come into your presence we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing lord we've come to give you thanks for all you've done because of your love join me in the opening prayer. Dear God, as we begin worship this morning, help us recognize you above all else. Open the eyes of our heart that we might see you and notice how you are at work through our lives. Give us wisdom to make the best choices. Fill us with a desire to seek after you more than anything else in this world. Let your spirit and power breathe in us, through us, again, fresh and new. Thank you that you are greater than anything we may face in our day. Thank you that your presence goes with us and that your joy is never dependent on our circumstances, but it is our true and lasting strength, no matter what we're up against. We ask that your peace lead us, that it would guard our hearts and minds in you. We ask for your grace to cover our lives this day. We love you, Lord. We need you. And now, let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, amen.
Hello and welcome to Calvary of Annapolis, the news to know. Today I bring you news from the backyard of Calvary, where we're currently getting ready for our first Vesper service of the summer. We are wearing our masks and practicing safe social physical distancing as we gather on the parking lot for some pre-measured, pre-marked time and space. People are bringing their own chairs and we're going to join together in prayer and reflection. We also have some private conversations planned for afterwards around conversation circles. So, weather permitting, we will be here next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Come early, park in the front, walk around to the backyard, wear your mask, bring your chair, and come share a Vesper service by the creek here in the backyard of Calvary Church. Friends, as our Sunday worship service begins, we want it to be a blessing to you. And when you go through our worship service and think about the worship events, I want you to think this week about how you might be a blessing to others. May the peace of Christ be with you now and always as we worship. This morning reading comes from the book of Matthew. Chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in the field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil duels and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning and welcome to our morning message this day on beautiful, warm, humid July Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but uh, is it fair to say that we live in a peculiar time? Are, are things going exactly the way you'd planned on this uh, 2020 July summer Sunday? This whole month, this whole summer, this whole season, this whole year? I don't know about you, but this is not what I had planned for the year 2020. One of the other peculiarities of our time, and in reality, it's not really new to our time, but it's really prominent in our time, is the language of fake news. Do you follow fake news? Are you aware of fake news? Does fake news trouble you, confuse you, make you angry, make you whatever? Well. <laughs> Fake news has been around forever, I know that. I remember, I don't think I ever attended a youth group or a Sunday school class somewhere and sometime throughout the, the years of the studies that we didn't from time to time stop. And the teacher put us in a circle and she says, now we're going to pass a message from one to the other. And she would whisper a message into one person's ear, and then they would have to whisper it in another, and it would go around the circle. And it, when it got back to the original person, the message would be sometimes so totally different that we'd all laugh. And the teacher would teach us about the importance of communication, the right communication, and how sometimes when we say one thing, it turns into something else that is even contrary to the original message. Well, it's false news, maybe it's fake news, it's, it's confusing. We've all done these kind of things. One of the sad pieces about false news or fake news or incomplete news or news that is shared with a slant and a nuance that is really not as accurate as the actual event is that in this day and age with instant access to worldwide media and messages that can be posted as fast as you record on your cell phone and hit send, that when the news goes out, when the information is shared, if it is not complete or true or exact, it's hard to get the information back. It's hard to stop the repetitive flow of news after news after news, of repeating after repeating after repeating. I don't know about you, you and, you and I both get emails that have been started with one place and passed on and passed on and we've done the same thing. Well, when we share information, when we share news, if we don't have it complete and we, we push the button and autocorrect changes our word and we hit send without rereading it, it's hard to get that news back, that information back. So in this day and age with news and fake news and the speed of media, we really have to watch even more diligently the words we use, the behavior we have, the character we present, because it's hard to get it back and hard to correct it. Now, why would I start a sermon about fake news? Well, fake news often leads to people making judgments, that people make decisions and actions and reactions. And one of the underlying themes of this particular scripture this day about the parable of the weeds is that there's an element of judgment that's within this and an element of waiting for God. Judgment and waiting for God. And one of the ways I was trying to figure out how I might present this is to talk about the imagery and the language of how we share news. Sometimes that news is correct and sometimes it's false or fake. But the other piece of it is, it's just kind of fun sometimes to discover what people are thinking and what people are doing. You know, I came across uh, this particular news that made me think, wow, I'm not the only one struggling with fake news. You know, a few years back, 
the United States Food and Drug Administration actually brought a case, a lawsuit case against a cheese manufacturer in Pennsylvania because they had marketed their cheese product as 100% real, real cheese, real cheese, only to discover that it had no real cheese in it. Real 100% Parmesan cheese to sprinkle on your spaghetti had no Parmesan cheese in it. This got to me thinking, I wonder how many other food products out there that we all say has this and that in it, but when you read that fine print of the product, that maybe it doesn't. I wonder, is extra virgin olive oil really extra virgin, or does it have some non-virgin oil within it. You go to the cold section of the grocery store and look for some ice cream or some frozen yogurt. Instead, you find something labeled frozen dessert, whatever the heck that is. What exactly is in Velveeta cheese? And who, who created Cheese Whiz, I'd like to know. One of the favorite products in my household is whipped cream. You mean you can't have an ice cream sundae, you can't have a piece of cherry pie with some whipped cream on it, but wait a minute, it's not really whipped cream anymore, it's actually whipped topping, in which is made up of water, partially hydrogenized vegetable oil, high fructose corn syrup, and a little bit of skim milk. And then, if my mind wasn't completely destroyed with what is fake and what is not, is, did you know that there is no cream in the filling in an Oreo cookie? No cream in an Oreo cookie filling. Let's not talk about milk. Let's not get worried about that. There's dairy milk, yes, but there's almond milk, there's cashew milk, soy milk, oat milk is the new product. And what about imitation crab, spelled K-R-A-B. You know, for Marylanders that love crab meat, imitation crab is mostly made up of white fish crunched together, egg white, wheat, and meat glue. Whatever the world meat glue is, that holds it all together and makes it imitation crab. What about imitation vanilla extract? Basically says there's no vanilla in this vanilla extract, and maple flavored syrup you guessed it, has no maple flavor. All this is taught to us by an organization called MEAT, M-E-A-T, Marketing Edible Artificial Foods Truthfully. Wow. Yes, this is what a preacher does on a hot, humid July. They get themselves on off on all kinds of tangents, looking for all kinds of stuff to share with you on a Sunday morning. Well, there you go. Fake news, false food. What is, what isn't? How much do you read? How much do you read when you buy those products? Is it good enough? It doesn't nourish us. All those kind of things leads us back to the scripture of the day that is about making judgments and waiting for God. Jesus tells us a parable. The setting is a large farm. Last week we had the sower that went out to seed on his small farm, but this is a large farm with thousands and thousands of acres where the wheat has been planted. And in the middle of the night, one of the neighbors sends his servants and sprinkles throughout this planted field. Artificial or fake wheat. Wheat or a seed that looks like it's growing as wheat, but as it begins to grow, it turns into another plant. And it mingles in with the good wheat. We have false wheat and real wheat. The servants of the big landowner discovers that the land has been polluted by this fake seed. And they want to know what the landowner wants to do. Do you want us to go out there and start pulling out these fake weeds, this fake wheat? The farmer says, no, no, don't do that. If you pull the weeds out now, 
you will damage the good plant because the roots of both good and bad are intertwined and intermingled. No, let's wait for the harvest. And when the harvest comes, we will then harvest the wheat from the false wheat. The wheat will be collected. The false wheat, the weeds, shall be burned. It's at this moment that we have to stop and pause once again and ask ourselves some very real questions. Why didn't God do something sooner? Why didn't God stop the evil persons from contaminating the good? Why didn't God just stop or eliminate the existence of the evil seed? Why didn't God stop the neighbor from doing what he was doing? Why wait to uproot evil from among us? Why wait? Why not do it now? After all, right now is one of the mantras of our society. I mean, even uh, when you're driving along, you might see a marquee uh, over the highway where it says, see something, say something, as though to help protect the rest of society. Why didn't God do something now? You know, down through history, people have been trying to keep themselves pure, trying to keep themselves uh, from being contaminated. And so there have been many times throughout the history of the world where parts of society have withdrawn from the rest of the culture and society and lived by themselves. They don't want to be tampered with. They, they create their own enclaves. They create their own systems and they remove themselves from the rest of the world. On the other extreme of that, we have some people that say, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to live in society and, and point out all the evil and call out for judgment and be both judge and jury right now for the rest of society. Sadly, both of these extremes can be equally destructive. They can damage the good. There's many a good person who has been damaged by a well-meaning crusade. Baptist theologian from Britain by the name of N.T. Wright poses an interesting philosophical question for us. Would you and I really want God to rule the world directly and immediately so that every action, every thought, every nuance that you and I might have in our lives would be readily weighed, good or bad, would be readily judged with judgment issued, and if needed, punishment applied. Do we want God to be right there, thinking about everything we say and do and acting accordingly? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not sure I want God to be that directly focused on my life. This parable, this parable is about waiting. Waiting is something we find difficult. This parable is about you and I striving to be the wheat that when it is finally harvested will bear food and fruit. This parable is about you and I striving to fight the evil or the injustice that surrounds us. It's about challenging us that when things happen to us, when bad things happen around us, when things happen to family and friends, when horrible things happen, when mistakes are made, when tragedy comes, how will we live and respond? The task as good wheat is to keep growing, to keep calling people to be faithful, to persevere, to resist temptation and tension that comes in life. So my friends, can we maintain our faith amidst a crisis where in the good field of life, 
tensions and tragedies and confusion and false news and information has been thrown into us. Doubt and fear and confusion has risen within us. We don't know where to turn. Can we stay focused on God? Can we seek to maintain our goodness, our character, our integrity? Do our lives reflect the authenticity of good wheat as faithful followers of Jesus? Or are we just a mixture of wheat and weeds that have grown together that we don't know which way to turn? that we have conformed to society, that we are not the people of substance or of character as we think we are. In this parable, the wheat is sown and grows. The weeds are thrown in and create confusion. But at the end of the parable, the harvest comes and God separates the wheat from the weeds. The wheat is kept, the weeds are thrown away. Can we be people of substance and character, of dignity and grace, of integrity and hope, so that we can take the fake news and be done with it and focus on the good news of Jesus Christ? May it be so. Let us pray. Most gracious God, in a confusing time, help us to rely upon you and those we trust. Give us the good news once again in simple form that we might hear you and follow you and grow to become the people you want us to be. Bless us in our faith. Bless us in times of confusion. Bless us with clarity of vision that we might seek you in everything we do and everything we say. May honor and glory be yours, O God. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. we have experienced in worship today be planted deep within our heart and soul. May what has been planted in our lives today grow through the love of God so that we will become the people of God that you expect us to be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs>